and general manager Ty Norris suspended indefinitely. And then on Friday, as you heard, Penske Racing, as well as Front Row Motorsports, on probation until the end of the year. I can't say I don't disagree with those penalties. The one that I totally disagree with, because to me, if NASCAR had a drop the hammer on this one, I don't have to speculate. Clint Boyer <laughs> spun that race car out with eight laps to go in turn four to manipulate the finish of that race and the chase. If they would have fined Clint Boyer 100 driver points, I think it would have been very clear what you can or can't do to manipulate the finish of a race, and we wouldn't be having these conversations. And Larry, when the smoke clears, who are the two drivers that are the benefactors? It is Ryan Newman and Jeff Gordon. Ryan Newman, at 8, eight in the evening on Monday, NASCAR said, hey, we're going to take quick reaction. Martin Truex out. This man right here, Ryan Newman, is in. And then a whole four or five days passed. And Jeff Gordon on Friday evening here is put into the chase. I do believe social media, Facebook, Twitter, Jeff Gordon has hundreds of thousands of fans. I think they pushed Jeff Gordon into the chase and NASCAR reacted. And clearly social media has had an effect on this whole thing. It has certainly been a subject of conversation. But now for more on the aftermath and also some rules changes, let's get you down in the garage area and begin our pit whips with Rutledge Wood. Hey, no, but I truly believe, I, I think the message has been sent, regardless of the press conference, regardless of rules. One thing that I picked up on that Mike Helton said in short form was the fact, if a competitor tries to manipulate the finish of an event, which in the case of Richmond was manipulating who was going to get in the chase, or if a competitor tries to negotiate with another competitor to change the outcome of a race, they will be penalized. It was short and sweet. I think... Honestly, I think that garage area, they have received the message loud and clear. Yeah, you know what's lost in all this? NASCAR did not ask for this. All the teams started this. And one thing that was strange, they addressed everything in four or five days. Usually that doesn't happen. And one more thing, they gathered all these drivers up and they said, gentlemen, enough of this shenanigans you're hurting the credibility of a sport if you do anything like this if you say Good go ahead and pass me we'll give you a free motor the shenanigans are, are bad they're yep. on you now now coming up in just a few minutes nascar president mike helton will join us here live on Virginia. and now there are 12 12 drivers 10 races one championship and actually now there are 13. As we get set to start the first race of the 2013 chase, let's get you up to speed. Defending series champion Brad Kozlowski may have been left out of the chase, but he was one of the fastest in the first practice, Larry. And remember, one year ago, led 76 laps and went to victory lane. One of the things he can accomplish, even though he's not in the chase, is go to victory lane for the first time in 2013. And Kyle Petty, when it came to qualifying, Penske Racing was fastest again. Yeah, last week, Carl Edwards wins at Richmond. The Ford camp seems to be peaking at just the right time. And at the top of that Ford list is the Penske organization. Joey Logano on the pole, and on the outside pole, his teammate, Brad Keselowski. And then Martin Truex made a statement in early practice Saturday as well. Martin Truex's heart was broke on Monday when they said, you are no longer in the chase, but he can make a statement today by winning this race and in victory lane saying, there you have it. This guy right here, Casey Kane, he needs to put it all together, this chase. So let's take a look at where everybody will start when they